Well, good evening, Reynoldsburg. It's nice to see all of you guys this evening. My name is Jennifer Clemens, and I'm the Special Events and Communications Coordinator for the City of Reynoldsburg. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 State of the City Address. Tonight, we gather to review the accomplishments and successes of 2021 and to take a look at the future of Reynoldsburg in 2022. But before we do that, I'd like to take a minute to recognize the elected officials, community leaders, and city staff that are here with us tonight, starting with State Senator Tina Maharajat, Erica Crawley, sorry, Erica Crawley's Police Policy Manager, Autumn Mitchell, President AFL-CIO, Mark Fluharty, Truro Township Trustee, Dennis Nicodemus, Truro Township Trustee, Pat Mahaffey, Truro Township Fire Department Assistant Chief Brian, City Council President Angie Jenkins, City Council Ward 1 Representative Seanette Strickland, City Council Ward 2 Representative Lou Salvati, City Council Ward 3 Representative Buwan Pacaro, City Council Ward 4 Representative Meredith Lawson Rowe. City Council at Large Representative Stacy Baker. And City Council at Large Representative Kristen Bryant. Uh, Reynoldsburg City School, School Board Vice President Angela Abram. Reynoldsburg City School Board Member Mandy Young. Reynoldsburg City School, School Board Member Neil Whitman. Planning Commission Member Alex First. Planning Commission Member Pat Zollers. Uh, Planning Commission Member Keith Benier. Banner, excuse me. City of Reynoldsburg Chief of Police Curtis Baker. City of Reynoldsburg Deputy Chief Rhonda Grizzell. Uh, in the back, we've got De Development Director Eric Meyer and the Mayor's as Administrative Assistant Jessica Rosenthal. And joining us right now, if you want to have a seat up front, we've got City Attorney Chris Shook. And last, Reynoldsburg City School STEM Academy intern Drew Longenberger. I want to say it's so great to look out and see so many familiar faces tonight. You know, we only succeed when we work together, and I cannot express how much we value our strong partnerships with the community and businesses in Reynoldsburg. So thank you. Thank you for all that you do for the city. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our mayor, Joe Begany. Good evening, Reynoldsburg. Uh, thank you all for coming here live and in person at City Hall. Uh, it's great to see a, a packed audience. Uh, we didn't get a chance to do this last year, so it's nice to see. For those of you watching at home, uh, you'll see a little bit of me, but mostly you're going to be seeing kind of the presentation that we're going to go over today. I'll try and keep it as uh, entertaining as possible. So with that, if you want to go ahead, uh, Clerk of Council Prasher. Uh, Jennifer was nice enough to start this thing off talking by one thing and one thing specifically about the, the ability that when we all have teams uh, to work together to accomplish things. So what we're going to try and do and see if this actually works, and, it, and of course it doesn't. Yep. All right. Well, this is the technical things that we do. So we'll go ahead and move on with that. So Molly, if you don't mind just hitting a button repeatedly. So if it really gets boring, she's going to speed things up. I'm just throwing that out there for you. Uh, it starts with a great team. Uh, the people of Reynoldsburg are not going to get anything that they want out of the services they need without some of the individuals that, uh, that work here on a daily basis that aren't here or have uh, more entertaining things to do this evening. Uh, the people that you see behind you are our employees of the month. 
This is a new program that I instituted the day, uh, first day I got into office, and this is uh, done for recognition purposes. Each one of these individuals was uh, you know, nominated by either staff, supervisors, or other even community members. And all of them have contributed in some way, have done something that has gone above and beyond what their normal call of duty is. Each one of them contributes to the success of the things that you will see tonight. And talk about success. This evening, uh, we're going to start it off very, uh, with the first thing with the highest grossing revenue year in the history of the city of Reynoldsburg. It's an accomplishment that, uh, that shows the strength and the interest uh, in the city of Reynoldsburg. Uh, you can see that with over $33 million in revenue, that actually exceeds our previous records by a few million dollars. So I want to thank the auditor's office for that information. Um, and that shows to the strength of what we're looking at here. Now, the other thing that's most important is why that's important is all of that money then goes into these city services. And the most important city services that we have out there right now are our roads. Uh, we know that at one point in time, we used to uh, spend a very limited amount of money on our roads to fix them, uh, and a lot of them are in disrepair. Uh, but last year alone, we spent over $6 million just on, specifically on our roads program, and we look to meet that or exceed that this year. We also had a lot of fun. 12, 000, over 12,000 individuals participated in Parks and Rec activities this past year, and that is with COVID and a pandemic, so that's a pretty healthy number. One of the new things that happened this year is not only are we talking about youth soccer and basketball and things like that, we're also talking about scavenger hunts, and we're talking about other artistic events that the Parks and Rec Department have moved to this year. So it's a little bit of something for everybody. And all of that is made possible by over 70 brand new businesses that have been created since the uh, January 1st of 2020. Those are 70 new businesses, small businesses, our friends, our neighbors, people that want to come into Reynoldsburg and invest that allow us to have some of the growth that we have seen. And that growth has kind of come up to what our budget is. Um, I, the chief and I talk often about uh, your budget is your priority list. So when you take a look at our budget this year, we're at about $25.5 million, and you can see how it is broken down between the different uh, divisions. Police Department takes the lion's share of it because they do the lion's share of work in the city that most others don't want to do. So we salute them for their service to the city. We also have moved on to other things, including our fabulous Parks and Rec program, our service department, the auditor's office, the city attorney's office, as well as development, and then the city hall general miscellaneous, which is you know, really not exciting stuff. It's copy machines and paper. So those are the boring things. But that's the budget that's out there. So these are the priorities of the city. Now, cities are funded in a different way than most people realize. Uh, cities are actually primarily funded by income tax, so that's why those small businesses are so important. That's why we are an economic driver of the city to bring these businesses in. And today's small businesses are tomorrow's medium size, and before you know it, we have our own version of Starbucks and whatnot. However, this year, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, with COVID, we are experiencing the issues of what the impact would be of people working from home and where their tax dollars go. And that's something that we're watching very closely because we really don't know exactly what's going to happen. Not us, not Columbus, not really the state of Ohio. So we're maintaining that. So this is about that fiscal responsibility that we have. We don't want to spend too far so fast this early in the year because we don't know exactly what the future brings. But what that does for us is it provides an opportunity for us to, again, rededicate ourselves to bringing in new business and, as well as this one, new housing, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, the next thing is property taxes. We don't get a lot of property taxes. Property taxes uh, fund our amazing school district. So those that are here from our school board, thank you for that. And we're trying to do all we can to moderately raise our property value. So that way you can have a little bit more money to spend considering the challenges that schools face uh, teaching in an age of COVID. Now we talk about housing. Um, I want to kind of bring up to mind a couple of things. Um, the city of Reynoldsburg has actually approved uh, or is in the process of approving around 3,000 units of housing over the last two years. That's a lot of housing. That could be single-family homes like we have on Wagner Road. That could be multifamily homes, including some uh, apartment complexes. We also have condominiums or townhomes. Any of those things are out there. What's interesting about this is the, the ability to provide housing in the city of Reynoldsburg is kind of coinciding with the ability to buy, provide housing in the central Ohio region. It is estimated that we need about 14,000 units of housing as a region every single year just to maintain pace with our population growth. This is sure to exceed with the news of Intel coming to our community because it will hit us as well. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to address housing in a very serious manner. We wanted to provide housing for everyone. Let me say that again. We wanted to provide housing for everyone, regardless of income level, regardless of ability to you know, uh, 
size of house, all of that. We're looking to have houses that people can grow and build a family in. We're looking for housing that were people who are ready to uh, kick their kids out and become empty nesters and downsize a little bit. We want to make sure we maintain our housing so that our senior citizen population are not priced out of the great community of Reynoldsburg. All of these things happen at once. And yes, some of it is going to be affordable housing. When we talk about affordable housing, best practices say that you need to have approximately 30% of your income going in to uh, pay for your housing. So if you're looking at about $1,000 to $1,200 a month in rent, which is around the average price of rent in Reynoldsburg for a one to two bedroom apartment, you should be looking at somebody who's making about $48,000 a year. We know that minimum wage doesn't cut that, even with some of the improvements that we've seen. So for those that are hardest working out in the community of Reynoldsburg, we don't want to drive them away. We want to welcome them here. We want to make sure that they have a place to live all the way across, and we're doing that. We also want to challenge our neighboring communities to do the same. It shouldn't be our responsibility alone. It should be everyone's, because we're all working together to kind of make our entire region a stronger and better place. Now, we have a lot of services to provide. We have roads to plow. And I'm going to give a little kudos. Uh, come on, our roads crew in Reynoldsburg, were they great or not? You know, you're working 30 hours, you know, throughout the entire time dealing with not only the snow but the ice on top of it. You're having to dodge cars and all of those other different things. So they did a fabulous job out there. And so we know that they're ready to do it again. So thank you to them. But that's only part of the services that are out there. Everything else is part uh, driven by this idea of the economic realities of our community. We also have an opportunity to take advantage of federal funds. Thanks to President Biden's uh, you know, uh, America Recovers Act, we do have a lot of extra funding available to us to do some of those long-standing improvements that we've needed. Go ahead. All right, so first off, we're going to talk about uh, the best thing is the federal funds. It's the Main Street. Anybody heard of Main Street recently? Yeah, it's been, it's been on Facebook. Um, Main Street is obviously going to be getting a complete uh, redo. So we know that most of Main Street has been repaved last summer, except for a very small section of it. What most of you may not know is we're using some of the federal dollars to actually provide traffic light synchronization all the way from basically from Wagner Road to Bryce Road. This will allow for an easier flow of traffic all the way through. So you'll have more green lights going through on those major arteries. We are going to work with it to make sure that when you're coming off of Lancaster, Wagner, Rose Hill, and things like that, that the traffic was going to run smoother. So we're already in the process of that, and that's going to happen this year. That's what some of those federal dollars are going for. We're also working with a brand new system uh, that I know uh, the fire department is going to be very much looking forward to. It's called the Opticom system. The Opticom system allows for emergency response vehicles to have a clear green light path to get to an emergency, and importantly, just to get back to the hospital to take care of those that are seriously in need of, uh, of service. So we're getting that done this year. We hope to expand it to include other cooperating areas, including Violet Township, going out into the area off 256 into Pickerington and things like that. But this is where it starts. We have to go through this. So those are a couple of them. We have the Hill Road Cemetery that's going to have some fencing. While it can be a fun sled hill, we do have to respect the ideas of what's going on in those cemetery. We need to make sure that we put the barriers up. So it's welcoming to those that want to honor the history of Reynoldsburg, but at the same time telling some people that maybe this isn't the best place to hang out. So we're getting that done. Go ahead. Uh, we also have some general infrastructure plans. This is uh, the least fun part of this presentation. This is stormwater, sewer. Not the most exciting thing, but incredibly needed. We know that, especially in our community, with the increase of uh, severe weather that we've seen. We want to make sure that we take those taken care of, get those things taken care of. We also have an opportunity to address longstanding issues with flooding, which I'll get into in a little bit. Go ahead. And finally, we actually have an opportunity to actually work on our Memorial Plaza. This is at the corner of Lancaster and Maine. Uh, for the last two years, we've been able to use this area to honor our veterans and um, those that have passed in service uh, to the United States military and armed forces. And we've also been able to have our 9-11 uh, ceremonies to honor those that uh, first responders that died in the tragic attacks of 9-11. So while these are not the exact examples of what's going to be there, we will be able to use some of these funds to provide some monuments, including recognizing that Reynoldsburg is a POW MIA city as well as a Purple Heart city to honor those that are out there. We're happy to work in partnership with the VFW and our Military Recognition Commission to accomplish these goals. So those are a couple of things that the funding is going to. Now, the legislative process. These amazing individuals that stand behind me are the ones that have come up with some great things that the City of Reynoldsburg is doing and has tasked me the honorable job of fulfilling them. Starting off with the most important one to drive that economic growth is a Minority Female and Veteran Small Business Grant. 
We are in the process of uh, uh, going over ap uh, applications right now. These applications will be eligible for uh, people that meet these conditions to expand or grow their business or provide new businesses to Reynoldsburg up to $10,000 each. Once we get the through with the first round from 2021, we're going to go ahead and do it again in 2022. Again, this is about an economic driver to provide opportunities to bring these small businesses to our community here in Reynoldsburg. And let's face it, small businesses is where it's at in the city of Reynoldsburg. We also have the opioid le legislation. We all know that the state of Ohio and countrywide has suffered from an opioid addiction problem. And with a long number of lawyers uh, going through it, we know that we, we, want, we are going to be receiving funds for that. So those funds are actually going to be ded dedicated to City Attorney Shook's office to continue to grow and expand and improve his uh, drug rehabilitation court, as well as other services for education in our community about the dangers of the opioid e uh, epidemic. City Attorney Shook's uh, services in this drug recovery court have provided great results. It's never easy. There are always successes. Sometimes there are failures. But the fact is that here in Reynoldsburg, we're not just going to ignore the issues of substance abuse. We are going to find ways to treat it, get these people healthy, and back on the street. And City Attorney Shook, Assistant City Attorney Least, and his office work dedicated hours to providing this service. So thank you for everything. Going on with housing, we know there's been a lot of housing legislation out there, anti-discrimination, income, in, uh, income inequalities, things of that nature, providing those opportunities that this council sees as an issue. While it may not be in the forefront of some of the members of the community, the reality is it does happen. Not every landlord is perfect. I know of some that are perfect. I know of some that are not. This is something that's going to provide those opportunities for all of our citizens coming into Reynoldsburg, that they know that they have those rights to make sure that they have a nice, warm place to stay. It's not about low rent. It's not about the least you know, offensive area that they want to live in town. Everybody deserves the right to live in a healthy, happy, and safe environment. We also have our senior water discount that is now in effect starting in January 1. So those senior citizens that live in Reynoldsburg, I'm talking to you about our water bills. If you are getting a trash discount, you're automatically going to start seeing that discount applied. If you are uh, over the age of 65 and you meet the qualifications that are on our website, you will be eligible to get a 10% discount on your water rates up to the 10,000 gallons, which is about the average use. In addition to that, for everyone out there, want to make sure that you realize that we are working to improve our uh, system to make sure that we are maintaining and uh, identifying any potential issues when it comes to leaks in the city of Reynoldsburg, because we all know what happens. Nobody knows when a toilet is leaking until they get that bill. So we're going to make sure that we're able to look at those things every 24 hours, every 12 hours, whatever it takes, that if we see an unusual amount of usage, we can contact those homeowners immediately. And we hope to have that process in place by the end of this year. It takes a long time, but we're going to get it done. We also have our diversity, equity, and inclusion position. Again, not only are we talking about diversity in our community, we're actually putting our money where our mouth is, and we were going to have a diversity, equity, and inclusion officer here in the city of Reynoldsburg within the next few months. And even better, we're partnering with our school district because they all want to improve. We all do. So we're looking forward to that. <laughs> Next one is cooperation a little bit with the Days Inn. We all know the uh, circumstances that have led to the closing of Days Inn. We all know that right now it is open, and I guarantee you that the city attorney and the police department are watching it like a hawk to make sure that every rule is being followed because we want to have a safe community for everybody. We want businesses to succeed. We want them to prosper but we want them to do it safely, and we want everyone to enjoy the benefits of that area. So thank you to the chief and the police department for their dedicated work, to the city attorney and his office for this. We're watching, and we'll make sure that it gets done. Now, how are you going to find out all this stuff? Obviously, you're here, so it's easy enough, but the rest of you need to find out some other things uh, because our community is the focus. We need to let the community know, not just the ones on Facebook, but everybody. So the first thing that we do is, obviously, we have a show every Wednesday, 12 o'clock show, Hope you get a chance to watch it if live or uh, reruns. For those of you that don't know what reruns are, if you're that young watching it, that, that's when it plays again later on in the day. Just throwing that out there for you. Uh, go ahead and check those out. I answer questions every week live. We have amazing guests. Today we had somebody who's, I guess you say a little bit of a Bengals fan. Do I get a who day? There we go. I have a plenty of guests that will come on from all sorts of different walks of life, representatives, business owners, things like that, because, again, that's part of the community. It's the opportunity to find out what's going on in the city. If you want the most up-to-date and accurate news, Facebook is fun, but it's not the best. Come to us. We'll tell you what's going on. We also have our community commissions. We mentioned one of those earlier, the Military Recognition Commission. We also have traffic and transportation, arts, beautification, and our welcoming and diversity. 
These are volunteer groups that are meeting here every couple of weeks to decide how we can best use some of these services in our city. How can we make traffic an easier thing? The residents on Priestley Drive know exactly what I'm talking about. We're working on that problem this year. If you want to know about military recognition, you saw that already. Arts and beautification, that's easy. How do we bring more art into our community, whether it's visual arts, musical art, or other? Theater, for instance. We're bringing that here into Reynoldsburg, and it's led by the community members that are passionate because that's where it counts. So those are a couple of things. We also have a new website this year. It was supposed to be last year, but websites are, well, they are what they are. But we are going to have a website this year, and it's going to go live in June or July or, or something like that. But it is going to happen. It's going to be a lot more interactive. It's going to be a lot more uh, user-friendly. So you're going to be able to find out exactly what's going on. Let's say you want to build a fence, or you want to put a shed in your backyard, or you want to nominate somebody for the Mel Clemens Community Service Award, like April Darling, who's here as a previous award winner. You can actually do that through our website. So those are a couple of things that we're looking at. Um, and then, of course, the email blast system that hopefully all of you already signed up for, so I'm probably wasting my time talking about it, the Reynoldsburg Connects email blast system. You can go to our current website and then just go ahead and put your name in and email. You're going to get one big email a month, and you're going to get some breaking news pieces every now and then. We're not going to overload it, and we're not selling it to other providers. We're just doing the best that we can to give you information. Those big emails include information from all of the city departments, community activities, as well as a lot of times contributions from members of council that are able to give that information out to you, again, to build that bridge with the community. So all of those things are looking, we're looking forward to. Okay. A big focus this year is the Green Tomato Initiative. I mean, seriously, we didn't live in a better town to come up with a more environmentally friendly uh, mascot. So we have a Green Tomato Initiative. Uh, we have a team that is led by members of the Ohio State University, staff members, and also community members that's going to allow us to find ways to become more sustainable. One of the first things that we're already doing are our squad cars. Our squad cars are out there right now. The average savings of about $1,700 in fuel per year, which we're estimating to go about $10,000 over the life of a cruiser, those are things that are savings of money to us. So for those of you that have cars, when you go to a stoplight and you stop and your engine goes off, it's the same thing. The difference is, and the trick with our RPD units is, they got a lot of computer materials in their cars. So how do we get them to have that access on it while the car is not running? So we found it out, and we're using them right now. So from here on out, folks, this is the style of what it's going to be. And it's going to save the city money. It's going to be better for the environment. And the performance is not lost. Believe me, uh, I, when I go on my ride along in a couple weeks, I'm sure I'm going to see their acceleration process. So we've got all that going. We also have our Swaco grant that we were recently awarded that's going to help improve uh, recycling in here in the city as well as educational materials for our parks all the way throughout. This is just the first step of things. Next, we're going to be looking to uh, deal with single-use plastic bags as well as any number of other items that are going to come before us. The biggest project this year when it comes to the environment that we know we're working on this year is uh, improvements to Blacklick Creek. What you're looking at right now is if you've ever had the opportunity to walk on Blacklick Creek in Huber Park and you might want to be on the pathway, you probably can see the water from right where you're standing on the edge. It's not safe. There's a lot of issues with erosion. So we're going to clean that up, get all of those invasive species out of there. We're going to move our path back off it for safety reasons, and that way it's going to be able to reinforce the uh, erosion factors that are in that area. It will also help with the flow of water, which, again, is something that we all know is an issue here in Reynoldsburg. So that's happening this year. We've already been one, awarded one grant for $237,000, and we're awaiting word on the other two, hopefully not to have any cost to the city. But either way, we're getting it done this year. Everybody's favorite topic is roads uh, and our sidewalks program. Uh, we have just identified our roads projects that are going to be coming up this year. So if you've been paying attention to the show, I've announced a few of them. Basically, the roads project is like a puzzle piece. We know that we have this many roads and about this much in terms of dollars to do it. So we have to figure out what's the best way to do it. One of the major roads that's going to be done this year is Taylor Road Southwest from the Edna Township line to the intersection at 256 at, at uh, right up right by 70. So that road's going to be done this year. All the other roads are also going to be in, uh, dealt with when it comes to the sidewalk program. Safety and trans uh, mobility of our sidewalk community is something that is important to us. So we're going to make sure that those sidewalks are nice and even, and we're going to take care of that all the way throughout. We also have some uh, sidewalks, I guess you could say missing sidewalks. I have my fun, yeah, the end is, believe it or not, there's a lot of these in Reynoldsburg where the sidewalk just stops. Not sure exactly how that happened, but this year we're going to take care of it. In partnership with the Franklin County Engineer's Office, who is represented here tonight, we are going to be working on our first major project to extend a sidewalk uh, right by the Livingston House from Palmer Road to the Five Way, including a pedestrian access bridge. That's happening 
this year. We're also identifying the next step. Is it going to be some of the other areas that we've heard about? Retton to Bryce Road. We are going to improve those things. Every year we're working at it. We've got a lot of makeup work to do, but we're going to get it done. Um, we also have our Main Street update. This is going to be the fun one, so I'm going to have to turn around to show you the pictures on this. We all know that Main Street is getting redone. So this is what it looks like, well, when it was a nice summer day. With our improvements that are going to be starting right now, this is what it's going to look like come the spring. You're going to see a brick trail. You're going to see some brushed concrete walkways. You're going to see some better flowers, planters, much more pedestrian friendly. And it's going to narrow the access, not from two lanes to one lane, but it's going to take it from two and a half lanes to two lanes. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow our small businesses in the Old Town area an improved opportunity for sidewalk sales, patio dining, all the things that we now wish we knew before COVID, we will now be able to have in this area, encouraging residents to come down there. So we're incredibly excited about that. I am also really excited about this next project, the Wagner Road redesign. After two failed attempts, we got together, figured out some things, and we were approved for the OPWC grant to improve Wagner Road, which is one of our most scenic roads in Ohio, in, in the Reynoldsburg. So what you're looking at with the top picture, and again, I, I'm going to turn teacher on you for a little bit. Right up here, you're going to have a dedicated right turn lane from Wagner Road to Main Street. So that's going to help alleviate some of the traffic concerns right there in this particular portion of things. As you move along, you will notice that you will have a multi-purpose path on one side and a sidewalk on the other side, allowing for easier transportation of individuals to and from everywhere. And this is going to extend from Main Street all the way to Broad Street. Let me say that again. Main Street all the way to Broad Street. You're going to have the connectivity here to walk anywhere you want in this area. All right. We're going to take care of making sure that we have those three lanes in throughout certain parts to alleviate some of the traffic. Because if anybody's ever been on Wagner Road, say Sunday morning, anywhere between 10 and 12, it uh, tends to get a little backed up at times. So we're going to work to find ways to alleviate those traffic concerns and get it to flow a little bit. At the end of phase one is going to be the next most important part of it, which is actually a street light. Yep. It's actually going to be a street light at the intersection of Priestley and Wagner. This street light is going to do a couple of things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to allow everyone to stop at a stop light before they turn in or turn out. So you're not going to have the issues with some of the safety concerns about people speeding out and occasionally speeding into the neighborhood. It's one thing going 45 miles an hour on Wagner Road, but sometimes if those people continue to go 45 miles on Priestley, it becomes a dangerous thing. This is going to help alleviate it along with some of the interior things is putting a median in as well. We are deep into the engineering of that. Right now, uh, we have survey crews out with emh &T, our city engineers, and they're going through and surveying everything. And we'll be contacting the homeowners to let them know if any of their property is going to be needed for some of these sidewalks and things of that nature. But it's going to be starting the, the, the grunt work this year, and we hope to begin construction of it in August of 2023. And then we'll move again in phase two in 2024, starting on the other side from Priestley to Broad Street. This started because a number of years ago, there was a young girl who tragically lost her life on McNaughton Road because she was walking to school. The road of McNaughton is not that much different than Wagner. We're taking care of it for the safety of everybody. So those are the things that we're working on in terms of Wagner Road. Now we get to some things coming up soon on Main Street in general. This is our development section of everything. Go ahead. We all know that we have an Eastwood development. This is uh, the uh, development that's going to go across the street from the Department of Agriculture on East, uh, on East Main Street. It's going to be a mix of a number of things. The first thing that we're going to see is some of the uh, issues with commercial space. We know that restaurants are desperately needed on that side. It's really everywhere in Reynoldsburg. So if you want to open a restaurant, you know where to call. Uh, but out there at the Eastwood area, we're looking to bring those things into it. We're also going to have some of those housing units that we're talking about, single-family homes, as well as some senior living and other apartments in that area. We also have the Alliance Project. Too bad the estate of the cities today because we're meeting with them tomorrow and we're going to find out what their site plan looks like. So we missed it by a day. But we will bring that out to you. They're very dedicated to getting this project underway. The Alliance Project is where the former Kmart building is on the corner of Bryce and Livingston, or Bryce and Main Street. We are working to get that there. It's going to look fabulous when it's all done. It's not going to look exactly like what those preliminary sketches look like, but they're ready to go. They've got their engineers. They've got their stuff. And it's going to be a great thing to enhance the entire area of Bryce Road. We also have a new library that is being, uh, going to be constructed this year. And if you haven't seen some of the pictures yet, How's that look for a brand new library right on Bryce Road? 
special shout out to Councilwoman uh, Kristen Bryant and Councilman Stacy Baker for their work in convincing uh, the Metropolitan Library Association that Reynoldsburg needs a new library. I would say convincing, and that's the most polite way. Usually those two council members are a little bit more firm in it, but that's what got the job done. So that's going to happen this year. So when you take a look at some of the interior photos, very modern, very crisp, very active and friendly for our community. And it's going to be very walkable all the way throughout. Now coming in uh, other areas of town, specifically into our old town area, everybody's thing that we've all been waiting for. Let's go ahead and take a look. The parking spot. No, wait a second. The parking spot? The parking spot is what we're kind of nicknaming it here. So the parking spot is actually what's going to be currently on the former Happy Dragon site. This is basically the thing, if you've been watching the show, you've seen some examples of this. This is going to be the cornerstone of the uh, entryway into Old Reynoldsburg. You're going to have an opportunity there for some medical office, which might not be exciting, but it will generate jobs in the city. I'm mostly looking forward to, all right, I'm really looking forward to the ice cream shop. So we're going to have an ice cream shop. There's going to be a coffee shop there. So for some of us that want to walk and travel in this area, we go to Prost, have something there. You want some ice cream afterwards, it's going to be right there, right next door. We're going to be able to walk to it. So those are the things that we're looking out here. So you see some of the pictures as we kind of go by. Yeah, go ahead. Are they all, oh, all done? Okay. Now we also have another major medical provider that's going to be coming to the city of Reynoldsburg. Uh, this is going to go across on the land across from the cemetery on Main Street. It's going to be roughly in the end, it's probably going to be around 60,000 square feet. Um, and it's going to be three stories. And it's going to provide a lot of great jobs and just as important, medical care to the city of Reynoldsburg. It's going to be in that area. That's what we want, job creating. Make sure that we have those available issues here in the city of Reynoldsburg. We don't have any pictures yet, but we're hoping soon. We also have what we all know about is the Center Ice Foundation. They are hard at work right now in a massive campaign uh, to convince everybody that this is exactly what the east side of Columbus needs. And believe it or not, they're talking to everybody. If they haven't talked to you yet, they're probably going to call you tonight. It's going to be an amazing facility, two sheets of ice and a field house that you're going to be able to partner with our school district for lacrosse, indoor soccer, all sorts of other things. There's hockey, and again, with the Olympics on, what better time to talk about ice sports than how many of you have been watching curling? I know Councilman Salvati has been watching curling. Anybody want to join a curling team? This is going to be the opportunity that provides. This is a quality of life thing that we're trying to bring here to Reynoldsburg, and we're working hard to make this a reality here. It doesn't just stop there. Now we got to our parks. We know that Civic Park is going to be uh, redone. We're going to take advantage of our most underutilized park into it. So this is the most recent uh, version. I would think it's version 352. Um, but what you're looking at right here is very similar to what we saw from the community feedback from two summers ago. Uh, this information is going to be presented to council uh, probably sometime in March so we can identify exactly how this is all going to look. Some of the highlights include a dog park of various levels, big dogs and small dogs, and there's going to be water so nobody's going to get thirsty. You're going to have a splash pad. You're going to have expanded walking trails with safety features all the way throughout. If you've ever been walking on a college campus in certain areas, you know you have the low lighting areas where you can push a button if you need to. We're going to have those in there as well. Those are all going to be some of the features in there, including Frisbee golf. The Frisbee golf has already been changed from this one, and this just came to us like last week. So that's how quickly these things move. The Frisbee golf is probably going to expand all the way throughout the entire park and make it uh, just another opportunity to bring people here. So that's going to be a wonderful project. It is going to take some time. Right now, I'm going to say it's going to probably take six years from beginning to end all the way throughout and uh, because, it's again, it's not a simple project, and, but that's going to be something that we're going to work on here at City Hall and with our community, and, again, we're going to take care of business. Now, the next thing that's interesting is our Bryce Park. This is an opportunity for us to partner with the City of Columbus in uh, the development of Bryce Park. So go ahead and take a look. This is as hot off the press as you can get. This is two and a half hours old. This park is going to be in the area uh, that is located currently where a storm, uh, storm water retention area is. It's so nice when you walk back there, we thought, hey, wait a second, why don't we go ahead and develop this with a park space? So there's going to be some trails, some picnic tables, and things like that. There's a lot of details that we're working out to get it done, but Columbus is dedicated, and we're dedicated, and we're going to get this thing, again, to enhance that Bryce Road corridor. So think of what we're doing on Bryce Road in two years. We've demoed the Kmart. We're going to build a fabulous facility that's going to have a hotel, it's going to have restaurants, it's going to have office space, it's going to have a convention center. We're going to have a brand new library, and then we've got a park just across the way. Just wait till we keep going down on Bryce Road. So that's our Bryce Park information. So we're looking forward to that. So stay tuned as all of that information comes up with our partnership with the City of Columbus. All right, now this is the part where they wake up. Um, the best division of police in, in Ohio and uh, even beyond that. Um, I cannot tell you how much uh, I enjoy 
hearing the stories and dealing with our officers on a regular basis at community events, at the police academy class that I'm taking uh, this time, it, you'll learn a lot. So I encourage everybody out there, if you haven't had the opportunity to participate in the police academy, please do this. So I'm going to read through a couple of these things just to kind of get through. Reynoldsburg Police Division, basically we've made diversity a priority. If you take a look at it, we want to make sure that our police force actually looks like the community that we live in. So we're educating our officers and we're recruiting people that actually want to be not only great officers, but great for the city of Reynoldsburg. And we're doing an amazing job. Um, if anybody ever wants to talk to Ryan Day about recruiting, you should also talk to Chief Baker about recruiting because he's on par, if not just a little bit better, with his ability to bring great officers into our police division. We also have some uh, crime statistics. Um, crime is everywhere. Uh, thankfully, Reynoldsburg has not suffered uh, the increase in crime that we've seen in other communities. But there are a few things that are out there. We've got techno oh, this is actually, I apologize, this is Flaw Camera. Uh, Flaw Camera is actually a new system that's being used to actually track and identify stolen vehicles coming into our community or individuals that might have an arrest warrant out. Uh, you may have seen them uh, in parts of our community as the people come in and out. They'll actually ID your license plate. And if your license plate comes up stolen, then our RPD is going to be notified with it. Within X amount of seconds, people are going to be dispatched. To give you an idea, the first 30 days that all of our cameras were in use, just the first 30 days, we recovered 17 stolen cars. That's pretty impressive. We've also found individuals that have stolen cars that are as young as the age of 15. We've recovered guns, we've covered drugs, we've identified things, but there's more to it than that. There was a story that uh, happened where a woman felt threatened and she let RPD know that uh, an ex-husband was actually threatening to take her life. She had the license plate, she verified it, we put the information in. We got the person coming into the community. We stopped him. He had a loaded gun in his car. That's why flock safety is important. Not saying we saved a life because you never know what's going to happen, but I sure feel better knowing that that person was stopped before they got to the ex-wife's house. So those are just a couple of examples with flock safety. In addition, we have our trends in Reynoldsburg. Uh, we have seen an increase in robberies, but at the same time, we've also have an incredibly high clearance rate. I'm not going to go into details about what clearance rate is other than I think it means we've solved crimes. So that's our clearance rate. Uh, we've also had an uh, increase in domestic violence, but we've also seen a decrease in burglary and breaking and entering um, it's seen actually a 53% reduction, which is actually a good thing all the way around. So there's a lot of things going on to be proud of with that. Last but not least is our training. We're actually improving our training systems all the way throughout. Over 5,000 hours of training last year, including de-escalation, cultural awareness, emotional and psychological disorders, all the updates about the law that you can possibly want, all done in-house. Because we don't only want the best officers, we want to maintain their best training so they can do the best job for us. So again, thank you for that. Now the fun stuff, community relations. Um, this is not just about having police officers in walking the street. This is about working with them to improve our relationships all the way across. So you can see by a couple of the pictures up here, we've got a lot of fun. Uh, we have a couple of resource officers or community officers that are out there at every community event that during the summertime they're out in their little uh, four-wheeler and they're talking to residents, talking to them, working with kids, participating in community activities all the way across. We also love showing off our dogs. Um, Bahador over on the side over here is our, our newest that was donated. The money for that dog was actually donated by a Bhutanese real estate company. So uh, there we go. And Councilman Paco, I hate to put you on the spot. Bahador, what's that, what's that stand for again? Bravery. Uh, if you have not had a chance to meet Bahador, it's a very, very happy, very friendly dog. Uh, so again, when you see him out at the community activities, take a look at that. They also participate in what is called the Starfish Program, Licking County Starfish, that uh, helps provide books to kids where officers will actually go in and read to some of the kids in the school districts. And then the kids will actually get those books. They've done coat drives. They've done other countless activities uh, for community members that are in desperate need of everything because we want to build those relationships with our community and our police officers. So again, great job for that. And last but not least, uh, well, not, not last, not least, our Citizen Police Academy. Um, I'm going through it right now. Uh, we were going to have on, be on class three, but uh, with last week's weather, it's something there. So there's a couple of quotes that you can read out in a long time. But the general idea is this. The people that participate in the police uh, academy, Citizens Police Academy class, learn what it's like to be an officer in today's world. And just as importantly, the officers learn a little bit about what our community members think about the police. And we can have those conversations. I'm all about the conversations. 
If we don't talk to each other, we're never going to solve anything or move forward. So when you have those conversations, and we've already kind of tiptoed around a couple just in two classes, when we have those conversations about what it's really like on all sides, everybody comes out better for it. So I appreciate it. Again, I encourage you to go ahead and join uh, the Citizens Police Academy. It's uh, eight weeks, and it's a lot of fun. Next class will be this fall. Okay. You can go ahead and just put the quotes up. Again, you can see those. This will be up later on. I won't read them. So that's our f first graduating class, correct? Second? First open to the public class. All right. And then last uh, but not least is our social worker who is gracious enough uh, to join us this evening. So I'm going to call her out right now. Melissa, could you mind just waving around? So if you want to take a look in the back, there's our social worker. The social worker idea was brought to us because we wanted to make sure that our officers were doing exactly what officers need to do. And we wanted to make sure that the social worker was there to do what social workers know how to do best, to deal with juveniles, to deal with issues with age, to deal with homelessness. Her first two days on the job, she was at the Days Inn making sure that if anybody that was having to leave the Days Inn would actually have a place to stay. She was instrumental in working with the community members that live at the Taylor, uh, the Taylor Shepherds Park on Taylor and Main. She was out there making sure to try and find any kind of arrangements for those individuals that might need to leave. That's why we have her. She gets referrals from officers all over the time. She works with our community medical officer at Turrell Township to provide extra services. And she is desperately looking forward to having this program grow in the next couple of years because the need is there. She's able to do what police officers can do, but it's not their best thing. It's about finding and connecting those resources, including things like domestic violence and issues with age. Police officers are enjoying it because it's one of those things that they can concentrate on what they're best at and the social worker can join in. So again, thank you for that service. All right, Tomato Festival. Um, it's a little bit different this year, August 4th through 6th, so we hope you can join us. The big reason for that is obviously everybody loves rides, so we do have a ride vendor. So come on out to the Tomato Festival this uh, August 4th through 6th. Got a lot of activities going on, some old favorite ones, including the Tomato Wars. Uh, but we're kicking around some new ones, so stay tuned for some of those opportunities. Most of them revolve around eating. I'm not sure why, but it just happens that way. So I hope you can join in for that. I was really hoping to be able to announce who's going to be on, uh, on the stages for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. So the best I can do is Thursday night's to be determined. We don't know yet. Uh, but we are going to have an R&B performance on Friday night, and then we are going to have some 90s music on uh, that Saturday night. So as soon as we have everything signed and dotted and all of that stuff, we're going to be out there. The picture you see is actually from last year's Tomato Festival when Arrested Development took the stage, and you kind of look out in the crowd. But I'll talk more about that in a little bit. We do have a lot of community activities out there. So we have, and going relatively fast, we have community cleanup uh, around Earth Day on April 23rd. We have our International and Cultural Festival on May 21st. We have Plant Reynoldsburg on May 21st, which is one of my favorite ones. We get to get in the dirt and dig uh, and plant some flowers, and then I can leave them and ignore them like I do all other plants. We also have our Memorial Day ceremony on May 30th. Our farmer's market that's always fun and entertaining from uh, June 9th through September 1st. We have our first official city-sponsored, but the third annual Juneteenth celebration. So Meredith, Councilwoman Meredith Lawson Rowe, uh, she thought an idea that it was going to be a small little thing has now turned into a major event, and she didn't know what hit her, but it's going to be great. Every time we work with it, we thank you for that. We also have our Taste of Reynoldsburg, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I believe a little bit of help with everybody else. We also have our first ever uh, official city pride celebration on June 25th. So thank you to Councilwoman Kristen Bryant for helping to organize that uh, activity. And then we really get moving on with our fireworks on July 1st this year. We have our 4th of July parade on the 4th of July. We have our national night out uh, August 2nd. Uh, we know the location, but we're going to keep that secret just for right now. But we know our location for national night out. This is another opportunity to meet our police officers in a, in a great environment. Last year, we were at the Oaks. Uh, off Wagner, so it was a great uh, opportunity to see all sorts of different things. Uh, you can see up there, I think we had, did we have the pictures already? Yeah, yep. so we had uh, Lieutenant Bender up there with the dunk tank. Unfortunately, he did not get in. We may have to change that this year. Uh, we also have our Heroes for Heroes uh, 5K on September 11th, which is actually fitting because it will actually occur on September 11th this year. Uh, I volunteered for this event a number of times. Um, it's a lot of fun from where I'm standing because I'm not running. But if you want to participate and run, please join. It's a great thing. It's a little bit of an obstacle course, a little bit of mud, but mostly it's to raise funds for those first responders in honor of those that fall on September 11th. We also have our Blues and Brews Festival on October 1st. Our homecoming parade sponsored by uh, Student Council. And thank you to Joe Sorensen and all his activities for the uh, Student Council homecoming parade. 
We also have our community Halloween party from the Reynoldsburg Community Association on October 15th. Uh, you might know that I'm a big Halloween fan, so really looking forward to that one. We also have our Veterans Day ceremony on November 11th at Memorial Plaza. And then we have our Christmas on the town tree lighting and parade and everything else going on to kind of cap off the end of the year. Those are a lot of the things that are going on in the time frame of just this year. A lot of that starts with change. Oh, go back one. They want to look at something pretty. There you go. Well, all right. Hopefully it's on home. It looks better. It starts with change. Um, there's been a lot of change the last couple of years in our society. It starts with conversations. Those ideas and those ideas lead to partnerships. The City of Reynoldsburg has proud partnerships with our school district, Superintendent Melvin Brown, our school board, teachers, staff, everyone. We're bringing in a DEI officer to embrace the diversity which our community holds dear. We are working to bring our police department into the school districts, not only as SROs, but actual members of the school to teach kids how to interact with police officers and to keep our police officers how to interact with our kids. Build those relationships starting early so we don't ever have to worry about some of the issues that other cities face. We build partnerships with the Franklin County Engineer's Office. We've already mentioned two of them. We've got the bridge that's going to be coming in for a pedestrian walkway on the five-way. We also have Wagner Road Project. That wouldn't have happened without the partnership of Franklin County Engineers. So we appreciate their help. It's because we have that communication. We have that relationship. We work with our township to provide support, not only for our first responders with the Opticom system, but also their contribution to the Wagner Road Project as well. We're working together because that's the way it should be in government. We also have representatives from state and federal levels to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there to provide funding for all of these programs that we're trying to do so that way we can kind of spare the burden of the local taxpayers. We're building a foundation for progress these last two years, but we're ready to take some of those next steps. In a world of immediate gratification, progress is never inst uh, instant, even if we want it to be. If you don't believe me, take a look at Main Street. It's going to get better, but to make an omelet, sometimes what do we have to do? Got to break some eggs, and that's where we're at right now. There's no better example of the change that we've seen in Reynoldsburg than in our demographics. We continue to be the third largest suburb in the central Ohio area. Most people don't realize that, but we are different and stronger than all the rest because we embrace the diversity of our community. We strive to be the city of respect, no matter color, nor race, nor religion, gender or sexual orientation, we've come a long way in just a short time. There are those that have negative views, those that blow the dog whistles of, you know, veiled racism. But no matter what, we're not going to follow that. We're not going to listen to those that find a way to say no. We're going to work with those that find a way to say yes and make this the place that we all want it to be in Reynoldsburg. We are a story of hope. We are the story of where we want to go, not necessarily the story where we've been in the past. One example of that is looking out at the stage at the Arrested Development concert, looking out at the fans. Never have I been more proud to be the mayor of the city of Reynoldsburg than looking out at a crowd of all of Reynoldsburg. Let me say that again, all of Reynoldsburg. They were all there, all represented, and all having a great time. That reminds us of how close we are. We're not as different as some make us out to be. That's how close we are. It reminds me of a story that I heard last year um, that was with uh, some college seniors they're having a discussion about where they want to go to school, and they're talking about, well, I went to this school, I visited that school. And one individual student, a um, young lady, said, I went to this university, but when I looked around, there was no diversity. I said, I don't want that. It was a great school. She got a scholarship, but that's not where she wanted to go. She said she wanted to go somewhere that looked like Reynoldsburg. She wanted to go somewhere that looked like our school district. That's the story of hope. That's our future. That's why I'm proud to be the mayor of the city of Reynoldsburg. We are stronger together. For together, we have accomplished so much in such a short period of time, and we are just getting started. The state of our city is strong, and we are getting better every day. Thank you very much to everyone for coming this evening. Thank you for those watching. I appreciate everything, and again, we got a lot of work to do. So thanks a lot for coming tonight.